If you are looking for a software equalizer for Windows, this might just be the best option out there. Installation of this app is essentially a two-step process. First, you'll have to download and install the Equalizer APO app. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Click on download. We can see that the installation file has been downloaded. If we open the file, click on yes, and now we proceed through the installation process. During the installation, you will be presented with this screen. I would recommend just checking all of the options available. These are essentially all your audio devices, so all your Bluetooth speakers. I have my um, Apple AirPods Pro. I have my Nothing Air 2s. So all your speakers will be listed here, so just check all of them. As for capture devices, keep in mind that if you check the boxes for capture devices, it will be applying equalization to the sound that comes in through your microphones as well. As for me, I don't really want the sound coming in from my microphone to be colored in any way, so I'll uncheck all the capture device boxes. But the playback devices, so the speakers, I have them all checked. Now we click on OK. As it says here, this dialog can be reopened anytime by launching configurator.exe in the installation directory. So this is not permanent. The selections that you've made here are not permanent. You can always modify them in the future. It'll ask you to restart your computer. I'll pause the video here and I'll come back once my computer has restarted. All right, so now that we've installed Equalizer APO and we can check that it has in fact been installed, if we click on Start, scroll down, you see here it says Equalizer APO. So it has been installed. Now the next step is for us to install the piece overlay for Equalizer APO. Um, I'll leave a link to this as well down in the description below. So again, we click on download. As we can see, the file is downloading. It's about a 28 megabyte file. Now that the installation file has downloaded, we click on it. Click on yes. And now we will be presented with this screen. You see, it says here that Equalizer APO is installed. So the piece overlay detected the installation of e Equalizer APO and we click on install. Click on yes. And there we go, the piece overlay has also been installed. Now all you need to do is click on start piece. When you start the piece equalizer, you will be presented with this screen. To start with, I would recommend using the full interface. So click on this. And there we go. Let me quickly walk you through the basic features of the app. First and foremost, here's the on off switch for the equalizer. So green turns it on and red turns the equalizer off. As you can see, I have made some changes to the, uh, to the different frequency bands. And if you want to get all the sliders to their default position, all you need to do is click on flatten. By the way, if you feel that the text is very small and is difficult to read, all you have to do is go to settings, click on sizes and amounts settings. And where it says font size, it's on eight right now. So if I change it to 10, and click on save. Now the font size has increased and things are more legible and easier to read. So here we have the different frequencies. These are the sub bass and bass frequencies. So 10 hertz, 21 hertz, 42 hertz, etc. Uh, we also have the mid range frequencies and the treble frequencies. So if I want to make an adjustment, uh, well, first let me turn on the equalizer. So if I want to increase the sub bass and the bass, for instance, so I can increase the 10 hertz band by, let's say, 3 decibels. I can increase the 21 hertz band by 1 decibel. And I can increase the 42 hertz frequency band by 4 decibels. And you can make changes to the mid-range frequencies and the treble frequencies in a similar fashion. By the way, just know that you don't have to stick to these frequency bands here. You have different presets where it says set 1, set 2, set 3 and set 4. So right now it's it's on set 1 and set 2 as we can see here it says 16, 32, 63, 125 and so on. So if we click on set 2 it changes the frequency distribution. Set 3 once again it changes. So if you want to bring it back to the original just click on set 1 and you're back to the original 10 hertz, 21 hertz, 42 hertz etc. In fact, you can even manually change them. So let's say I want this instead of 10 hertz, I want this to be at 12 hertz. So I just enter 12. And then for 21, instead of 21, I can have, let's say, 26 hertz and uh, so on and so forth. So you get the idea. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that these sliders are extremely sensitive. In other words, 
you don't need to make major adjustments in order to experience a noticeable difference in sound. In fact, if you make large adjustments, it might end up distorting the drivers of your speakers and it might even permanently damage your speakers. So be very careful with these. Only make minor adjustments first and see how it affects the sound. In most cases, I doubt you'll have to increase any slider beyond 5 decibels in either direction. So this is 5 decibels above and this is 5 decibels below. Here we have a list of your audio devices and microphones. And if we click on the C next to it, you can see it brings up the configurator that we saw during the installation process. Here we also have the Q factor adjustments. So I would recommend leaving these as they are. Most people will just be using these sliders right here. Once you've made changes to the sliders and are satisfied with the sound, you can even save it as a preset. So click on save here, give your preset a name. So I'll name it AirPods Pro Preset. Um, you can even assign a hotkey, so a shortcut, and you can even change the color of the logo of the app. So I'll change it to pink and I'll click on save. So now whenever I switch to the AirPods Pro preset, you'll notice that the logo of the app is pink. It's pink here and it's pink in the, the notification area as well. There's a volume slider here as well as a pre-amplifying slider here. I would recommend keeping this box checked where it says prevent clipping. In addition to creating your own presets, there are also presets provided by the app itself. So we have bass boost, classic, dance, graphic equalizer, high boost, etc. If we click on the to tray button here, it minimizes the app to the notification area. So I'll click on to tray and it's minimized right here. If I click here once again, it opens the app. And there's also this feature called Auto EQ, which has presets for all kinds of earphones and headphones from manufacturers such as AKG, Audio Technica, Biodynamic, Sennheiser, as well as mass market manufacturers like Sony and Philips. The Peace Equalizer interface was developed by a gentleman by the name of Peter Verbeek. So thank you so much, Peter, for providing this application free of charge for the benefit of the general public. And if you would like to make a donation to the developer, there's a link right here. The equalizer presets have been condensed into the scrollable list right here. Uh, now, if you don't want to keep scrolling up and down, all you need to do is press this button here where it says extend list of configurations. And what it does is it places all the presets in a longer window to the side so that now you won't have to keep scrolling. If we click on settings here, as you can see, there are all kinds of settings. In the interest of time, I won't go through all of them, but there is one setting I would recommend you change. You see here where it says when selecting an equalizer configuration, change this to don't confirm, just activate and press save. What this does is when you switch to another equalizer preset, it'll switch immediately. Whereas before, every time you want to switch to a new equalizer preset, it'll present you with a pop-up dialog box and you'll have to click OK on that and uh, that'll just slow you down and it can get a bit annoying after a while. I think that'll do it for this video. Before we leave though, I have a question for you. A question I have yet to find a definitive answer to. Which is better, a software equalizer like this or one of those hardware equalizers? Or to put it differently, which is preferable, a digital equalizer or an analog equalizer? Now I know preferable is subjective, so I guess a better way to frame the question would be which is less destructive on the original audio signal. Another variation of the question would be with which form of equalization does one get a cleaner audio signal, a software equalizer or a hardware equalizer? Now I know what you'll say, you'll say just trust your ears, go with whatever sounds good to you. While that is true, for those of us who are interested in the technicalities of music reproduction and are true audio enthusiasts, I think this will be interesting to know. Besides, I think one should keep learning new things and um, keep educating oneself. So leave a comment below if you know anything about this topic. Please consider donating if you found this video useful. There's a PayPal link in the description. Also in the description are the names of a few songs that I've been listening to recently that I think you'll really enjoy. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.